those dates. Uh, Saturday, the 9th of April, Senate and House of Representatives elections. And then on the 16th of April, presidential elections. And the 26th of April, State House of Assembly and Governorship elections. Uh, give us your view in terms of what we'll see uh, with regards to responses on the equity front. Do you th think we'll see some pressure? Because there has, of course, been a lot of disappointment that we've seen two postponements in the matter of 48 hours. Yes, I think um, the fact that the elections got postponed on Saturday such a last, at the last minute and um, they've been moved to next Saturday, I think you'll probably see some pressure in the equity markets and probably on the Naira as well, on the FX market. I think uh, a bit of disappointment that, well, on the positives, the fact that the um, INEC chairman had the, comf had the ability to see that things were going wrong and to postpone the elections is a, is a positive. That said, I mean, when you look at the international media and also newspapers here in South Africa, a lot of question marks are marks with regards to credibility of elections in Nigeria. Do you think it puts question marks uh, to the fore? As you said, I mean, we have been seeing a lot of courage as well at the same time. Um, yes, uh, obviously, when you postpone election in the last minute after saying the day before that you're ready for it, it does uh, call into question credibility. The fact of the matter is that elections in Nigeria and elections anywhere else are really a logistical problem. And the, the way we, have, we do elections in Nigeria and the, our political culture, it, it, we have to, for security reasons, have a lot of the election material actually arriving in the country and going to the polling centers at the last minute. And that is what causes a logistical nightmare. And without proper planning, you lead to issues like happened on Saturday. Well, Kayoda, I mean, you mentioned that we'll see pressure um, in the equity market in today's session. On Friday, we had a positive day. When you talk about pressure, how much more downside do you think we'll see? Do you think it'll just be a knee-jerk reaction, and do you think it'll be predominantly from those foreigners? I think we, well, what's been really moving the market in the last few weeks and months have been foreign investors coming to the market. I think with what's happened over the weekend, those investors might, some of them might start pulling out and so that will be the effect on the market. Local investors haven't really hit the market in force um, in the last few months because there hasn't been that much confidence. But with the new DG of the stock exchange starting today, maybe they can start building on local confidence in the market. Looking at some of the big price movements that you're expecting uh, this week, of course, we have been seeing a lot of results out, especially from the healthy banks in Nigeria, yet to see some of the numbers out of the rescued banks. The play between those two th in the coming week? Um, I think w we have to wait to see until the first rescue bank comes out with the results. The banks that have come out with results already are pretty strong banks like Zenith, um, access where the results have been following the trend of the last few quarters, which is drop in revenue but increase the profitability due to increased efficiency and also reduced um, provisioning. Now, in terms of the apart from Diamond Bank, which had an increase in provisioning, which the market hasn't taken too well. But I think with the rescued banks, it'll be interesting to see on, on how they've operated, especially in the um, 2010 and the quarter one, especially in light of possible MA action. Mm. Kayoda, in terms of new announcement when it comes to buyouts and takeovers within the financial space, do you think that, uh, of course, there has been a lot of whispers on the ground, and you probably know far better than I do in terms of some of the speculation that has been priced into these uh, numbers, do you think we'll get more clarity when some of these rescued banks do release results? Um, I don't think so. I think what will happen is that those that have agreed their MOUs will announce, as they've done, but that's just really the beginning of a process that involves regulatory approvals, legal approvals, which could take a few months. And I think until they, they are, they're going to be able to approach shareholders with deals on the table, I think that's when the details will start coming out. Apart from that, I think we will continue to get bland statements on agreements being, MOUs being signed. Another stock that has caught uh, many people's attention, Transcorp. We've seen incredible volumes uh, as well. A lot of interest, not only from locals, but foreigners as well. What is driving its share price at this point in time? And why are we seeing it being one of the most highly traded stocks over the past while? Well, Transcorp is an interesting stock. Um, the chairman of Transcorp is a former DG of the stock exchange. And it was set up really to be a national champion uh, under the previous um, government of President Obasanjo. Now, after 2007, they lost government patronage and a lot, quite a few of the assets, especially like NITEL, they would taken over, were, were, uh, were taken away from them and they were left with just the bank. But in the last few weeks, what we've seen is that they've announced a deal with Sacoil, where the Sacoil is going to farm into one of the oil blocks they have 
um, for about $30 million, and there's going to be development on that old block. And also, they've announced a second hotel in Calabar in southern Nigeria. So I think investors are looking at it on, on up, especially since from the IPO price for about seven naira, it dropped all the way to 50 kobo at the around the beginning of the year. Yeah. It's now going up as people see value in the stock. Mm. Uh, so in other words, you're buying at one naira 15 because that's where it's trading at. It gained around 4.5% uh, uh, last week. But uh, Coyote, as you mentioned, uh, when you see where it was at around 7 naira and dropping down to 50 kobo, massive volatility. Do you think that it is now on the path uh, to gain significant ground? I think uh, the v where the share prices are right now shows the real value in Transcorp. The 7 hour IPO was, as we do to many of the IPOs that are released during the boom period, was overvalued. And that showed clearly when financial figures came out and showed they couldn't back up the IPO figure. So I think we, ha we have more realistic pricing now. And if the management can continue pushing the company forward, then you can see more steady growth mm -hmm. in the share price. Uh, Kagyode, I mentioned those three dates which are very important for Nigeria, the 9th, the 16th and 26th of April with regards to elections. Uh, do you think that most of the news has been factored in? Or do you think that we could see a little bit of hesitation? Uh, you mentioned the Naira, that we could see a little bit of pressure as well. Are you going to be sitting on the sidelines to see the results? Because if things go wrong, we could see significant selling uh, out of the equity market. These elections are uh, going to be landmark elections in Nigeria, and it's very important that they're credible. I think INEC made the right decision when these uh, things were going wrong in postponing it and discussing with the opposition political parties about the best dates to have to have the reruns, the, not the reruns, the postponed elections. Now, I think going forward, sat this Saturday is key. If the elections are not held or are not credible, I think we'll see significantly more pressure in the following week in equity and in FX markets.